because that's exactly what we're going to use because we're not going to mess with this anymore. Okay, um, get out of my way. And, all right, so there we go, a little bit about me. Um, I'll get this a little bit bigger. So, all right, so let's get started on the real thing after we spent way too long on getting my screen to work. So what is Data Factory? The um, Data Factory is, I'm going to give you the Microsoft definition. I like that, the cloud-based, highly scalable. That's actually not their definition. You hear them talk about, they are talking about a cloud-based and highly scalable data movement and transformation tool. What's interesting about it is it's not integration services. So if you've had experience working with integration services and working in the environment where you're actually um, you know, building out packages and making tools work and all those kind of things, you are going to find that Data Factory is a very different experience for you. And that is by design. The goal of Data Factory is really about taking a lot of different types of data and running it through a pipeline and pushing it out. So as we start to work, as we work through some of the terminology and we look through some of the examples that we have created, this will give you a good chance to see what's actually happening and, and why it's a, viewed as a scalable approach. It is built entirely in Azure, the, all the components, so you need to keep this in mind. If you use it, you can use it for off-premise work as well. However, the data will go through the cloud and you will incur the appropriate costs on egress as well related to that. So as data, as you know, moving data to the cloud is, or to Azure is free for the most part. Taking it out costs you a little bit of money. So that's one of those things. If you, that's right, a lot of you are new to Azure. So that is something you need to be aware of. You can put a lot of data in Azure. Um, if it, unless it moves out of the data center that it's in, you will actually not incur a cost related to that. The final thing I want to talk about on Data Factory before we jump into some more of the details is that it's in preview. So it is not likely feature complete. As a matter of fact, when I was prepping for this session and doing some work, it was, uh, if you look at some of the documentation, it doesn't even bring up machine learning activity as an available activity in the pipeline. So that was just added in 2014, and so some of the documentation hasn't even caught up with their most recent release of um, content that's available and activities that are available to work with. To really get a good understanding of what Data Factory is, we have to work through some terminology and, and explain some terms and kind of talk about the tooling that's involved in Data Factory. So there's this concept called linked servers. For those of you very familiar with SQL Server, this is not a SQL Server linked server. This is merely a reference and a connection to some other you know, data storage area. I say data storage area because it's not really necessarily the data source, it's just the reference for the Data Factory. So the, so it knows how to hook up and work with these tools. In this case, um, currently the Data Factory supports SQL Server databases and Azure storage. It does support platform as a service, so the Azure SQL, SQL, yeah, the Azure SQL database, uh, infrastructure as a service, and on-premise, which are very similar. It, it does support on-premise. It uses the Data Gateway. So if you're not familiar with Data Gateway, I encourage you to go look at that, but that allows you to connect from Azure uh, to your on-premise data and be able to interact with that data in secure pipeline forms. Uh, it also interacts with Azure storage, both blob and table. So if you think about a blob, it can actually pull in uh, text files. So if you're doing, this, is, this really comes valuable when you're doing work with HD Insight, which is one of the primary uses of Data Factory, is the ability to actually work with HD Insight tooling it allows you to drop a lot of files into an area, and you can actually drop it into a container, a blob container, for instance, in Azure Storage, and it will know how to consume that data once you've defined it. It actually works with Azure Table Storage as well, just a you know more of a flat version of the data, um, lets you get to the key value pairs and work with that. It also has a concept of data sets. So once you set up your link servers, you're basically in a set of data sets that interact with these servers, and they they have um, while Practically speaking, they are the same construction. Um, I want data set, and we'll look at the how it's built. But for the most part, the data set for input and output are built identically from an overall structure standpoint. What they basically do is they provide the wrapper or the, or the instructions around what piece of data that you're using. Even in the SQL Server database world, you can actually send a query if you want to send a query through the JSON um, 
document or as well. It'll actually understand how to execute a query on the SQL Server database. Um, it refers to the link server in order to do that. In all cases, that once you create the JSON form, you're going to deploy it out with PowerShell. And it'll get deployed to the pipeline, and you'll see it show up in your Azure um, portal. And you'll be able to see and, and look at what the details are around the data sets. Now, the only thing to differentiate an input output is actually its position in the pipeline. So the pipeline is the other major data component, or the other major component of the data factory. With it, you actually uh, can do a number of different types of activities, and you're going to you're going to do a JSON document as well, and you're going to build that document out and then deploy it with PowerShell, and do the same kind of work there that you would do with the data sets, except for it's actually an activity file that you're focused on. Um, the activities that are currently supported, and I think this is where we'll see the biggest expansion. Um, this, I suppose really this and link servers, we should see the ability to actually hook up to other data sources eventually. But you'll also see different activities. So this is a copy activity, which we'll show today in the demo, because this is the intro, and it's one of the easiest ones to walk through end to end. Uh, HG Insight will allow you to actually interact with um, HG Insight data in Azure, and allow you to run a variety of different um, activities for HD Insight. I encourage you to look at that. If you're actively using HD Insight today, this is a tool that you definitely want to have a look at. It also can do some work with Azure Machine Learning. So it will do, um, it actually, you can actually incorporate activities around machine learning as well. And I, I didn't have it on this slide, but you can actually build custom activities uh, for your pipeline. And you can do that with um, .NET and C Sharp. And they're basically called .NET activities. So that's the basics of the components. As we look at into it, that was supposed to be hidden. So let's have a, you know, rather than, that's kind of the highlights. And it's somewhat either, easier to look through all the pieces, because Data Factory itself is fairly um, straightforward and simple. So let's look through the different pieces that we have to work with. So today for the demo, I'm actually going to move files or set up uh, Data Factory to move files from a CSV file into the times from there into a movies table in Azure SQL database. So quickly, just to look at that data that we're working with. This is a file that we are uh, currently work, looking at. Um, it is basically movie title, studio, and year released, and a series of you know ten different records. This file was actually added to um, Azure Storage. I forgot to get Storage Explorer open. Let's go ahead and get that uh, opened up here so you can actually see it. And so what I did is I have an Azure Storage account associated to the group that I'm in. 